This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2656. Money Talks, But Do You Speak the Language? by Kathleen Coxwell of NewRetirement.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get to today's post as we optimize your life. Money Talks, But Do You Speak the Language? by Kathleen Coxwell of NewRetirement.com. Have you ever traveled to a place where they speak English, but the people have a heavy accent and a different dialect? You have a vague and slowly formed idea of what they're saying, but it can make you feel confused. Most of us feel that same confusion when dealing with personal finance issues. Personal finance uses a whole other language, set of rules, and way of thinking. Money talks, but it has its own way of saying things. Don't feel bad if you don't always understand. Financial concepts you need to know. Some financial concepts are indeed complicated, but most can be understood if you slow down. Here are a few plain language definitions to help you understand what money is trying to say. We're also supplying links that enable you to easily apply the concepts to your own situation. Sometimes the best way to understand something is not by listening to a chattering expert, but through trial and error. Here are a few of the financial terms we all have been exposed to, but may not fully grasp. Number one, inflation. Inflation is when the prices for goods and services go up and the purchasing power of the dollar goes down. As an example, Sam Ewing is quoted as saying, Inflation is when you pay $15 for the $10 haircut you used to get for $5 when you had hair. Most working households can tolerate inflation if their wages are growing at the same rate or faster than inflation. However, in retirement, it can be especially difficult to keep income on pace with inflation. We've been lucky over the last 10 or so years because inflation has remained very low. A dramatic increase in inflation will seem like Ronald Reagan's characterization of it, as violent as a mugger, as frightening as an armed robber, and as deadly as a hitman. Number two, assets. In the world of personal finance, assets refer to property owned by a person or company. However, you would not necessarily include everything you own as assets. You would only include things of value that could be available to pay off debts, commitments, or legacies. In other words, nearly synonymous with assets include holdings, resources, investments, and possessions. Number three, diversification. You know about diversity, people of different backgrounds and cultures. Diversification in finance is similar. It simply means having your money in different kinds of holdings. If your assets are well diversified, it might mean that you keep your money in a variety of ways cash, stocks, mutual funds, and real estate. You can also think about how to be diversified within one kind of asset class. If you own stocks, you might wanna own a wide variety of companies in different types of industries. And if you own one type of company, you might wanna diversify to all companies in that category. Financial professionals think that assets should be diversified because if one type of investment is problematic, another one might do well. Number four, hedge, hedging, hedges. You know what it means to hedge your bets. A hedge is a kind of plan B. A hedge is a financial strategy that tries to take away risk. There are many easy and complicated ways to hedge your finances. Being diversified is one way to hedge. Number five, cash flow. Cash flow and personal finance refers to the amount of money being paid out every period and the amount of money coming in in every period. Positive cash flow means that you're spending less than you're earning. Negative cash flow means that you're earning less than you're spending. Number six, rate of return. The rate of return refers to the profit or the loss on an investment over a specific period of time, expressed as a proportion of the original investment. So if you invested $1,000 and after one year, your investment was worth $1,100, your annual rate of return would be 10%. Number seven, risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is defined on Investopedia 
as the degree of variability in investment returns that an investor is willing to withstand. If you can afford to lose significant money within a specific time period, then you have a high risk tolerance. If you need to be able to access the income, then you have a low risk tolerance. Number eight, assumptions. When you're calculating your finances, you sometimes need to make assumptions. Assumptions in financial models are the inputs that we are uncertain about. For example, we don't know if our investments will do well or not, but if we wanna predict how much money we'll have in 10 years, we have to assume some kind of rate of return. The assumed rate of return is an assumption. Assumptions that can dramatically impact your retirement planning include rate of return on investments, inflation, the cost of goods and services, housing inflation, home prices do not always rise or fall at the same rate as general inflation, and medical cost inflation. Medical costs have been rising dramatically faster than general inflation. When retirement planning, it's useful to see what happens to your financial security with different values for different assumptions. Number nine, home equity. Home equity is the value of ownership in your home. If you have paid off your mortgage, your home equity is equal to the current value of your home. However, most people who own their homes also have a mortgage. The home is yours, but you borrowed money to buy it. Home equity is the value of your home less the amount you still owe on the mortgage. The amount of home equity you own grows every time you make a mortgage payment against the loan principal. Your home equity can also grow as the home appreciates in value. Home equity can be a powerful way to fund your retirement. You can downsize and release the equity or get a reverse mortgage if you wanna stay put. Number 10, present value or future value. This should be simple. Present value simply refers to what something is worth now. Future value refers to what something will be worth in the future given a set of assumptions. It seems obvious, but it can get a little bit tricky to think about when you're planning your retirement. Consider your home. It may be worth $400,000 now. If you have an assumption of 1.5% for appreciation, then the future value of the home in 20 years is $550,000. However, if it appreciates at only 1%, then the future value is only 500,000. Now imagine that you wanna downsize at a point in the future to release home equity. You need to be able to calculate the future value of your current home, as well as the future cost of a smaller residence so that you can estimate how much money you'll have access to at that time. And number 11, lifetime income. Lifetime income refers to income that you will receive for as long as you live, no matter how long that turns out to be. Guaranteed lifetime income will be there no matter what. Social Security will continue to send you checks whether you live to 85, 105, or longer. Social Security is reliable, guaranteed lifetime income. When planning for retirement, you ideally want to establish a lifetime income stream that equals your expenses. The most common sources of guaranteed lifetime income are social security, most pensions, and lifetime annuities. You might also have unguaranteed lifetime income sources from rental property or other investments. You just listened to the post titled, Money Talks, But Do You Speak the Language? by Kathleen Coxwell of newretirement.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. It's no secret that something always comes up when you're running a small business. It's time to take the pain out of payroll benefits and HR and put the joy back in running your business with Gusto. Gusto's payroll and HR services can make it a little easier. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment. Gusto does it all. Want more? Time tracking, health insurance, 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts, you get the idea. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your business. It's super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, Gusto can transfer all your data for you. It's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto. 94. Here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. 
All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash OFD. Again, that's gusto.com slash OFD. I'm telling you, you're gonna love Gusto. Get started today. This article reminded me of when I first started working on my financial literacy. I wanted to learn about investing, but I was completely intimidated. And everything I read online made me feel like an idiot. But I know that I'm a fairly intelligent person. I was a straight A student who went to college on a full academic scholarship and I graduated with a 4.0. So why was it that investing seemed really challenging to understand? I believe it's because the financial services industry benefits when people feel like they can't do it themselves. If everyone was a DIY investor who bought low fee total market index funds instead of expensive mutual funds or actively managed portfolios, a lot of people would be out of a lot of money. Almost everything I read about investing told me to talk to a financial advisor. It was presented as if it was brain surgery and it would be stupid for me to try to do it myself. That was until I read the book titled The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. J.L. actually wrote the book for his daughter who had no interest in money or investing. He wanted to give her an easy to follow blueprint for building wealth that would allow her to set it, forget it, and move on with her life. Not only did he make investing easy to understand, he convinced me that it wasn't only possible for me to do it myself, it was actually preferable. That book gave me the confidence to start investing in the stock market and allow my money to make money through the power of compound interest. And the rest is history. And that'll do it for today. Have a great day and start to your weekend. Thank you for listening. I'll be back here reading to you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.